Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to export a DXF file from SOLIDWORKS, open it in CorelDRAW, and prepare it for uh, processing on a laser system. Um, so I have my piece loaded here. This is actually an acrylic piece from my 3D printed guitar. Um, so the first thing I want to do is go up to File and then select Save As. And then I'm going to select DXF file from the type. And I'm just going to put this on the desktop. I'm going to keep it with the default name and I'll click Save. Now the important part here is that it's asking me which views I am going to export. Um, so it's important to make sure you are uh, normal to the view you want to export. Um, so you know if I'm if my uh, part is not normal to, I want to select the face I want to export um, and normal to it. And now the current view will be exported as a DXF. So um, you could do it that way, or what you can do is pre-select the face you want to export, file, save as, select your DXF location, and click save. And now it's saying entities to export face one. So it doesn't really matter which way you do it. Um, there's a couple ways, uh, just personal preference. So now I'm going to click the uh, checkbox because this is, in fact, the face I want to export. And you see a preview, um, and it allows you to clean up the file if, if there are uh, entities in there that you don't want to export. So, for example, if I didn't want all of these holes in here, I can actually select entities. And if I hold control, I can select multiple and actually remove those from the DXF file. Um, so it's nice that it will allow you to do a, a little bit of quick editing before you even go into Corel. So now I'll just click Save. And the file is now on my desktop. OK, so I have CorelDRAW open now. Um, I have set up the sheet based on the CorelDRAW X5 setup video that uh, Universal Laser has created. Uh, if you have not already followed this video and set up your sheet based on uh, the machine that you're working on and change the color palettes, I highly recommend watching that video first. Otherwise, none of this will work properly. Um, it all depends on the the getting the color palette right, so uh, that's very important. Um, but assuming you've done that already, the next thing to do is drag and drop your file into Corel. Um, you can also just go to, up to File and Import uh, and find where you saved it. And you can see the file is now on the sheet. Um, and this sheet, since I've set it up for the system that I'm using, which is the, the PLS 675, um, it's basically a top-down view of my table. So wherever I put this uh, file, when I go to, to print it, I go file print, it's going to put it uh, in the print driver at that location. So now I'm going to actually edit the file so that it, uh, it cuts out the way that I want it to. Um, you have the three main colors that you, the universal print driver uses, black, red, and blue. Uh, your black is generally your raster engraving, your red is your vector cut, and your uh, blue is generally your vector engraving. Um, you ha they have uh, five other colors that you can customize as well. So the first thing I want to do is right click on the file and then go down to object properties and that's going to show me my object properties window. Um, for something to actually cut on a laser system, you actually have to have all of the lines set to hairline. Um, now you can see when I select this object, you can see my width is 0.425 point, which if I sent this to the print driver now, um, it would not be able to cut. So I can just select this drop down and select hairline, and now the entire uh, file is, is hairline. Um, another thing you need to do to get something to cut is change the color to red um, because that is the color that's recognized as a cut line. Um, so now if I zoom in on this file, I can, I can see everything is red and everything is hairline. Um, if I want to make some more changes to it, uh, you can tell when I select any part of the file, the entire thing is selected. So I would need to actually break this file apart into individual lines if I want to edit it. So to do that, I'll select the file. I'll go up to Arrange, and then Ungroup, and 
And now when I select an individual object, I can change the color or I can delete it, whatever I want to do. Um, so that makes it so that you can easily edit different parts of the file um, without affecting the entire thing. Um, if I want to group the thing back together, because if you notice, I can now drag things and they'll, they'll move individually, which can become a problem. And I'm going to go edit, undo, move. Now, if I select the entire part and I just press Control A to do that, or you can you can actually drag a box around it and let go, and then just go up to Arrange, Group, and now if I move the part around, it moves as one piece again. So I'll just go to File, Print, and select my print driver, and click on Preferences. From here, I can select Plastic and then Acrylic, um, then I click OK and click Print to send it to the print driver. So from here we just need to go down, select our laser driver and open it. And you can see the file is in the laser driver um, at the same position uh, where we had sent it from in CorelDRAW. So if you, if you notice that uh, the file is red in CorelDRAW but shows up in the print driver as black. That means that the print driver did not recognize the fact that you wanted that to be a cut line. And that could mean a couple of things. The main one is generally that you would have forgotten to set this to a hairline. Um, it has to be hairline to recognize it as a cut path and it has to be true red. So um, if you don't have your color palette set right and you don't have your uh, width of the line set right, those would be the two main reasons why it would show up red in Corel but not show up red in the print driver. As long as you uh, set the, the sheet up properly um, following that other tutorial video, then everything should be good to go. So that does it for exporting a DXF file from SOLIDWORKS, opening it and editing it in CorelDRAW, and sending it to the laser